Gelabarkam. My name is Shomi Ghosh. I'm uh, assistant editor at ETC So. And uh, thank you everyone for joining us today on this discussion on simplifying security through consolidation. Now, in the last year, India faced 13.9 lakh cyber attacks, according to CERTIN's data. And the number of cyber attacks on the government doubled in 2022. Now, we know all too well that the skill set crunch and India is also all set to uh, table the data prediction bill that's coming up in July. Um, and this time, you know, the stakes have changed. There is a penalty involved, uh, like Babita Ma'am was mentioning it. So a company that fails to take adequate action for data breaches will face a penalty of uh, up to 250 crore. So that's changed with the new PDP. Uh, threat actors are also using new languages such as Rust uh, to write malware, uh, which has given it better payload uh, delivery capabilities. It's given them better obfuscation capabilities. And leveraging uh, AI tools like uh, ChatGPT uh, and also accesses can be purchased off the dark web by script kiddies. Again, Babita Ma'am, you mentioned the name of a group, uh, Lazarus, there's also Lapsus. And we've seen these new script kiddie groups actually making inroads into companies like Cisco and Nvidia. So the stakes have completely changed uh, in the last couple of years. Now, these, these new developments have brought the focus on building the next generation SOC. Now, to build an automated SOC, which is powered by AI, you'll need to get the right kind of data. This data comes from your network security, endpoint security, cloud security, IAM, your threat intel, among many others. And as the threat surface increases, more of these tools keep coming in. You have more data to analyze and sift through. So to discuss that, uh, we are going to be bringing to light, you know, why is it becoming an overwhelming challenge for CISOs and CIOs? What are the challenges it presents? And how are IT leaders overcoming these challenges in their own organizations? And what best practices can be shared? All right. So to start with, let's quickly introduce the panel that we have today. Uh, let me start with my left here from uh, Mrs. Manjusha Devi. Anil uh, Menon from the Lulu Group. Anil, if you could just introduce yourself, your designation, please. The CIO for Lulu Group. Thank you so much. Moving on, Manjusha, ma'am. Manjusha, I'm Manjusha Devi. I'm working in Intergelite in India Limited at EGMIT. Thanks. Welcome. Sujas, uh, I'm the Managing Director of Abbas of Technologies. Hi. Uh, my name is Sridhar. I work as a CISO for Madhuri. Moving on, yes. Myself, Edish, and from Madhruvumi, I'm working as assistant engineer. Welcome. Sugish, hi. Yeah, Sugish here, and uh, uh, I'm the associate director of uh, Spider Technologies. Hi. Uh, Binusa, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm uh, with the EQS group, and the director of engineering and the head of IT. Too good. Thank you. Welcome. Sanjana, ma'am. Hi, everyone. I'm Sanjana, and I'm the director of SGI Netronics. Hi, friends. Welcome. I am the Group Chief Information Officer for NES Group. SFO Technologies is our flagship operation. All right. And uh, Mr. Vijay Nair, thank you so much. Hi. I'm Vijay Nair, uh, CTO for PanApps, or Assist International Private Limited. All right. Babita, ma'am. Yeah, I'm Babita, uh, CISO of CSB Bank. Right. And uh, uh, we've got Mr. Arvind Soni, who, who was underlining the fact that you shouldn't be using your real names in CISO events. That was boom because my colleagues uh, don't know the expansion of the A, so <laughs> that was fine. Uh, so I'm Soni, I'm the CIO of um, South Indian Bank, I also head digital in the bank. All right, hi, welcome. And of course, last but not the least, we've got uh, Sivin, uh, Sovin uh, Mulasheril. Uh, Sovin's from Palo Alto Network, Sovin. Welcome. I lead the systems engineering and pre sales team for Palo Alto Networks. Been with, been with Palo Alto for like eight years now. And I know a few of you, so look forward to an engaging conversation. Sure. All right. Thank you. Thanks once again for uh, joining us today. And then I look forward to a great conversation and learning a lot from you folks. Uh, so to start with, you know, uh, you know, there was one of the reports that I was reading uh, in an average organization. Uh, there are about 45 different silos that CISOs and, you know, CIOs, IT leaders have to, uh, you know, contend with. 
Now, what are the specific challenges that you face from a security standpoint when you're working across these, you know, different silos with different uh, data coming from each of them? Uh, so, if I could start with you, please. Yeah. So, I think uh, as a CIO, uh, for starters, actually, I was in the same room yesterday from morning till late night uh, because we had a strategic uh, meeting of the board. Uh, the biggest uh, challenge that we face now is that there is a humongous ask on anybody who is leading technology, digital especially, to come out with the goodies for the future to support the business. So there's a huge amount of uh, development effort, incremental improvements, enhancements that should happen. And at the same time, as I keep saying in all the forums in India, banks especially are facing huge problems of scale because the kind of exponential growth that something like UPI and others have had means that we have to be completely up and running and planning for the future without any idea about what kind of scale are we going to see in tomorrow. And then there is this third threat of having a wrapper of security around whatever we are doing because we happen to be in that hot area where everybody wants to hack, everybody wants to see what best can come out of uh, you know, any kind of attempt, be it from a reputation risk point of view, financial data or exfiltration of data and so on and so forth. So the biggest challenge that we face right now is to balance the priorities so that uh, even though we spend quality time in all of these areas, um, we constantly, um, you know, be alert to the uh, possibilities of uh, problems, have resilience plans built in and constantly practice that again and again so that we are not taken by surprise, touch wood, uh, at any given point of Touch wood, absolutely. Let's continue with uh, the conversation in the banking space. Now, moving on to Babita, ma'am. Now, um, you know, <clears throat> in addition to the complexities that uh, Arvind sir mentioned, there's also uh, the purview of RBI, you know, which which has uh, very strong regulatory uh, requirements. Uh, you have a lot of deadlines to meet. Uh, you have a lot of regulations to meet. Uh, so does this increase the level of complexity? Um, how do you view siloed applications as a roadblock to security. The siloed application is a need of the hour. Okay, we cannot now live without that. Mm -hmm. So how securely we can connect? So what uh, Sonisa was mentioning, like the needs is more, the ask is more. So we, if we want to timely deliver it, we have to go for silo and we have to accept it. But here that when you are talking about the regulatory aspects, that there it helps like you have to follow these this, this rules when you are connecting to the external environment. So right. Yesterday, day before yesterday, the outsourced IT uh, that circular has come, which has clearly mentioned what and all need to be taken. Because even if we are connecting to a third party, ultimately the responsibility rests with the company mm -hmm. who is giving it to the third party. So that kind of responsibility the organization should take before we are delivering or we are connecting with the other company or other third party who are supporting us for the applications or solutions. And there definitely API plays a very important right. role. Now API will be the concentration of security, then key management and all those sort of things. And the problem here I see is uh, now we are connecting to a lot many applications uh, through the cloud or any other services. And we might may come to stop that application soon and that API connectivity will be let alone because we don't have a proper inventory of it. What, where we are connecting, what kind of data is flowing to the other part, or all those things we have to build from scratch because if, when, if, I, if we are taking the case of my bank, it is a 100 year old bank. Mm -hmm. There might be a lot of things when the bill comes, it will be really difficult time for us where the data resides. Right. We have to collate right from the desk. So that is a big task. It is easy to say that this bill comes and the penalty will be imposed by the regulators and all those things. But uh, on the ground, the working, how we are going to do it, it is a big task. All right. But again, I go for regulators because they are coming with something that is why we are forced to do. Otherwise, we will let it open. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's been doing a pretty good job as well at that. So, yeah. um, you know, moving on to uh, uh, Vijay, sir. Uh, sir, you come from a slightly uh, different space uh, it's you specialize in analytics. So, with respect to you know your company uh, at Pan Apps, what are the specific challenges with siloed applications uh, you face when it comes to cybersecurity? Okay, I would actually say that I am on the other side. 
okay because we provide applications for and uh, one of the challenges is that the, the yeah it's on the the kind of uh, people we provide this application are mostly government and multilateral organizations mm -hmm. so and and the data which is there is all open data right so these are prone to attacks uh, at the simplest level like last week we had uh, attacks on the ddos attacks just simple denial of service two very complex attacks at the other end, we have issues like uh, Babitama was saying in the banks. Mm -hmm. You have the legacy. Most of the government systems are legacy systems. You have to collect data from there, uh, clean it, curate it. So there are challenges of, first of all, what you're connecting to. And when, you're, when you're talking of silos, we, we build mostly systems which are siloed systems within the organizations. Right. So we are, we are not really the core systems if, if we are in a banking environment we are not the core suppliers we are not core banking suppliers if it's a government systems we are not the core erp or whatever system is there mm -hmm. these are siloed systems but these siloed systems again sometimes need to talk to the backend systems and they need to talk they are the ones which are mostly public facing so these are public faces for um these institutions, governments, etc. So security is very important. And uh, the difficulty we particularly face is we are not the ones actually running them, but they keep running to us saying that, okay, we have this problem or how do we solve this problem? So we are not directly in the line of uh, fire, but we need to anticipate that. We need to be working on solutions for that. That's that's something uh, interesting challenge I say. Perhaps we can talk about later. Absolutely, that's a great perspective, uh, Prince. If you could tell us, you know, what's what's what are your thoughts around it? Uh, you know, what what kind of difficulties do you face when you're working with siloed applications, especially with security? I don't know. I think this is a bit of a, a misnomer because if it's siloed, it's actually safe, isn't it? It's not really connected to anything. It's it's very secure. We a set of people inside the organization uses it. So for me, the challenge is not in siloed applications per se. It's about you know what are you doing with with the lifecycle management of that application. You know, at okay. what stage of the life cycle is it? What are you doing around it? Because right now, when you look at an application and we look at the interfaces, it's needed. When you look at the interfaces as needed uh, to connect to it, then there's a lot of things that you need to think about in terms of how do I secure the, or, or how do I maintain a, a specific posture that is required, etc. But for me, more than that, it is around, uh, you know, you look at that whole time model of applications. Do you want to keep tolerating this application? Do you want to invest in this? Then if I'm going to invest in this, what I'm going to do? Uh, do I need to change the platform? Do I need to look at other aspects? Or do I look at other elements with respect to what's to be done. So it's it's around the life cycle management, which is where I would focus. Okay. Otherwise, per se, the need for several applications is because you're not able to get anything off the shelf. You've got a unique need and uh, um, OTS isn't helping. You need to build it. And if you're building it, the risk there is when you're doing it in-house, you are a bit lazy and mm -hmm. you keep using the same tools <laughs> because I have a hammer. Everything to me is a nail. So I'll keep using the same stack. I'll keep building it the same way. That means I don't really find the level of improvement that I would find if I was to go outside. So those are some of the things and we can keep talking, I guess. Sure, we'll explore more of that. But then great points on the uh, build versus buy point. Now, uh, uh, Bino, sir, if I get to you, um, you know, what are what are your thoughts? What are your observations uh, with what you observe at EQS Group? Um, so here we've got one point of perspective, you know, one perspective that's saying siloed applications. Uh, in a way, it's a little easier, but then that could be a challenge when it comes to lifecycle. Uh, what about, you know, the situation where these applications have to talk to each other, when there's a little bit of data interchange necessary, where there's a necessity for visibility? What are your thoughts on this? It's uh, quite interesting. So when I look into a very complex banking systems, <coughs> Yeah. very complex uh, banking systems and then maybe a different uh, um, uh, range or I mean maybe. Uh, that's why I mean that concept changes but yes I'm not uh, with the silo uh, because I mean there are a visibility problem when you look into so that is the biggest I mean problem which can be when it comes into a complex system so what uh, the threat currently what we are looking into is the current scenario where from where we 
move to I mean, where we do stand today. From prevention, we have moved to a detection, then a reacting, and I mean, then a kind of I mean, mitigation strategies. So what changed is the, of course, the number of attacks changed. That is, there is no surprise that has to change. Mm -hmm. But what actually changed is the precision, the speed. So that is where I mean, it's more deadly and I mean, more uh, damaging uh, factor. So then the other side, we also have to be more equipped in that uh, point of view, the sophistication, so which brings uh, speed and accuracy. So in that, then we need to uh, connect different systems and I mean there uh, that coordination is required. So where the 360 view is very much important and more systems then uh, more slots or I mean uh, gates to get into. Mm -hmm. So all these uh, looking into, but yeah, of course, I maybe I'm in a different scenario. I mean, where he is having a different opinion. So until and unless we, we are not knowing, I mean, getting into the architecture or maybe be the structure, I mean, we cannot make a proper comment, but I am with uh, the other side. All right. All right. Thank you so much for that. We are getting, you know, different perspectives. That's, that's you know, leading to a good conversation here. Let's uh, move to Anil, sir. Mr. Menon, uh, you know, what are your observations? He's, uh, Binusa brought up a really interesting point, uh, especially around, uh, there's a, you know, drive, there's a need to actually decrease the mean time to detect uh, threats and the, you know, necessity to remediate cyber attacks as quickly as possible. How do you relate this to, you know, uh, applications working in silos from a cybersecurity perspective? We come from a different industry called retail. Mm -hmm. Every morning there is an innovation. And every morning someone is bringing some new application, hosting it somewhere else, and has no clue about what's going to happen to it. So is it, is it going to drive? Is it not going to scale up? Is it not going to scale up? No idea. So there are, we have three problems running there. One, knowing what application, where, when, which is getting connected to which application. Mm -hmm. So we are innovating. That's a need of the hour. You can't tie over on it. So governance around it is something which is a pain for us right now. Point number two, now you said silos, right? Silos looks good. Mm -hmm. It is good when it is undetected, but that is a threat again. Because once this application dies, you, you are not removing it out of your inventory as right is said, right? It is just being there. It's connected somewhere else. Because there are so many innovations happening, so many products happening. The silos becomes a challenge at, after a point of time. The third one is the legacy systems. Right. When the legacy system starts talking to the new A systems, there's a breakage for sure. How much of that can you stop? Either you, what is invested, you need to push it out and go ahead or try to do something in the middle. There's something in the middle is the challenge. Right? And very rightly said when uh, Arvind sir said just now, the wrapper is just a wrapper mm -hmm. of security. You do not know how much of these tools have come under the, uh, under the wrappers or how many are outside. Right. Detection of that is a challenge as well. These are three points which I think is taking us away from what we should be doing. All right. Thanks for that. Uh, I'll take the opportunity to also welcome uh, uh, Shijo uh, Cherian, sir. We missed your introduction. Uh, if you could just quickly introduce yourself, sir. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Uh, so, you know, we'll quickly move to uh, Majusha, ma'am, for her take on this, and then we'll get back to you yeah, sure. uh, for this for this particular question. Ma'am, uh, if you could relate uh, this particular situation with respect to your organization, how do you see this as a challenge, or is it a roadblock at all? We actually come from a different, uh, I think, uh, environment, like mm -hmm. a manufacturing company. I'm working there for the past 32 years, and uh, we, uh, we are working with an uh, ERP system. So not much encouragement to the silo systems in a way because mm. this integration with the ERP is a challenge for us. I see. So we are using SAP and there are a lot of restrictions for uh, that kind of integration is very, it's a very big challenge for us. So mostly we don't encourage using the silos, but now our present challenge is that our marketing team for the their uh, sales to move up and all, they are going into social media. They want a lot of software coming up to be implemented there and then we have to integrate with SAP. So I'm making them understand that this is, uh, we can't immediately give them what they require, but with a permissible security, that is one of the challenges we are facing now. Till now, we didn't have any such problem because we are in a secured environment. We had a lot of firewalls, all those things and attacks are all very less. We don't give access to outside people. Mm -hmm. And even from outside home also, outside office hours also, we don't give any connectivity to our office. But okay. after this COVID pandemic came, we had to, uh, 
those and the, those those things also then now we are giving some uh, these things vpn connectivity so we are, data is very important for us so the silo uh, cases we are not much encouraging but now we are facing a little bit of threat uh, challenges from our market uh, marketing team only they require otherwise all the uh, department functions are connected with this uh, sap software and we don't have much outside integration usually we run with the erp only right thank you for that yes i have often heard that you know in addition to uh, the integration visibility and orchestration is a common challenge mm -hmm. especially when you have edi based integrations in yes. supply chain right so uh, moving on to uh, sujas sir sir you've been in the business for about 20 20 years now you've literally watched these silos crop up uh, so how do you see this working out in the cyber security space yeah uh, recently most of them are speaking about cloud mm -hmm. uh, the story connected with our organization is also into cloud-based uh, fintech solutions development. In that case, actually, we are uh, visualizing and the public is the real direct access with our entire ecosystem. That's the main situation. Now, actually, what uh, when we are thinking, discussing about the cloud to a customer, the first question is, is it secure? Uh, normally, oh, my banking, my accounting data or my finance data is keeping into cloud. Is that safe or secure? I now actually what we did is actually we want to identify the answer for that. At last we found out an answer. The answer is actually uh, while keeping the data in your computer, it is something like keeping money in your pocket. And if you are keeping the data on cloud, it is same like keeping money in bank. So mm -hmm. cloud is ensuring all the security. And uh, if your computer is, uh, obviously, there may be a lot of, because uh, no one is complete expert in securing their environment. Right. So uh, we want to hand over the responsibility to experts. That's what uh, uh, I suggested. Obviously, that's a sales point. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so silo is really a challenging aspect to restrict something from uh, the information required person. So... Uh, not completely into that direction to control everything completely instead of sharing information to others. But we need to ensure that uh, uh, proper security should be there and the responsible experts should handle that. In that case, everything should be visible properly with the different layer level controls. That's what uh, I am commenting on silo-based applications. Are you Thank sure you. you are not working for Palo Alto Network? <laughs> not Palo Alto, yes. <laughs> so thanks for that. Yes. Thank and, and yes, we are the experts, so we, we yeah. have to be the experts. That, that, that's the point I am just reaching out to. <laughs> Uh, uh, Srina, moving to you now, uh, uh, so just brought a very interesting point. It's about uh, the ease of operations. Now, we've heard a lot of CIOs, a lot of CISOs saying, you know, they would want to focus more on uh, innovation, uh, you know, developing more, uh, innovating more rather than keeping the lights on or working on, you know, basic uh, security mechanisms or taking care of IT infra. What are your thoughts around it? You know, do you think managing these siloed applications, uh, is an impediment to, you know, the amount of time you can spend on innovation and uh, otherwise other things that you would want to do? <clears throat> my opinion is, uh, the siloed applications, you know, most of the time, uh, as far as my experience concerned, right? I am into media industry. Mm -hmm. So we have a mix of both legacy and new type of applications. Silo application is very easy for you to, you know, uh, build, you know, but the problem is how you are doing it the life, life cycle behind it. Are you in implementing the proper security architecture behind that uh, silo application development? All these things need to be done. Right. First thing you need to know, because security is only a necessary part, right? It's a part of a big, big organization. So for my purpose, uh, uh, ex uh, expert is like this. If you want to, you know, secure anything, right? For In my case, we are doing a zero trust architecture now. So I want to see all the traffic going uh, in and out of my uh, company so I can do, do crea create a lot of policies around it. So the visibility is important part. Silo, if the silos application is not giving that, mm -hmm. then I'm not into, you know, um, supporting that. That's it. I see. So, uh, you know, for an organization, which I believe a lot of organizations have started taking baby steps into, you know, approach towards uh, a zero trust framework. 
and I think visibility is a key factor. So yeah. thanks for bringing that out, uh, Srinath. Uh, moving to uh, you, sir, you know, uh, you could also, you know, relate your perspectives from a publishing company. What are the challenges that you face uh, with respect to, you know, siloed applications or what are your cybersecurity challenges that you would want to overcome? Actually, uh, we are now uh, currently not much uh, into the uh, security size. We are, uh, I, um, as my colleague said, <coughs> we are doing the zero trust, mm -hmm. and uh, we are uh, um, trying to uh, implement that with a um, best view, sorry, um, best uh, way. And I think uh, I am not much into uh, as a new 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 person. I am not able to tell so much on things. Things like that. No worries. It's, I think it's a great learning platform for both of yeah. us here. All right. Uh, Sugish, moving on to you. Uh, could you share your thoughts on, you know, siloed applications versus uh, and the challenges that bring in it, that it brings in its wake? So the challenge uh, for me here is like, uh, I was talking to Babida and all, and she was wondering like, uh, why people are not coming to office, right? <laughs> so, Bank also. so, I mean, for her, she, we, we are in a different world, parallel world, basically. Mm. So, I'll say olden days, which means five years ago, right? <laughs> in IT, it's olden days, five years ago. We were having, like, people working from office, and uh, pretty much everything was actually on-prem, we were uh, hosting all of our application on-prem. Infrastructure was pretty much under control, though it was, even if it is our uh, IT landscape or uh, if you take our uh, um, systems or uh, application, everything, even if it is ILO systems, it was under control because pretty much everything was under the same network. People were uh, in the same network. The scenario completely changed in the last years last five years, especially for my company, Spurdian. In the five years, we acquired eight companies, which okay. means consolidation is something like a continuous activity for me. Like every year, at least one or two company merging with us. That merging activity, it's like, it, 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 it's like, you know, it's like a consolidation. We need to look at their systems, their infrastructure. Um, Sometimes the cultural adaptation also need to be done. On the same time the COVID happened, right? The entire workforce started working from home or work from anywhere. And that also created a lot of uh, issues, a lot of concerns regarding these siloed systems. Right. Now, I think um, just like any other uh, IT firms, we also started thinking towards consolidation, towards implementing or to, towards, you know, uh, planning the different uh, layers of infrastructure or the system talking each other. Right. We were having a lot of options before as well. Like we have SIEM and we have uh, endpoint protection, but that was not talking each other. Right. Now, I mean, to unleash the power of all these systems, I think we need to consolidate definitely wherever possible. I'm not talking about the investing part of it. Like, uh, if you want to consult it, uh, entire IT landscape, it's not possible. But I'm I'm continuously working towards it, especially as part of this merging. I had to start doing it, and I felt like I can see a lot of benefits out of it. So we we are actually looking into every every layer, not not just the infrastructure, not just the security systems, not just the application, corporate application. We look into every layer. And uh, we are continuously taking efforts towards, uh, you know, consolidating all those areas. And I believe those those days are gone where, um, again, I think someone from here was pointing out, like, vendors. I mean, um, I'm sitting in the different show, right? I'm I'm representing an IT service company or I'm I, we have fintech companies. And we have even the B2C, like, you know, we, we have B2C company also. But... Most of the time, we used to answer the client just by filling the RFPs and all say like, we have this security facilities or we have this security framework implemented. But nowadays, the clients started vendor analysis. They started scanning, literally scanning the vendor, 
network and vendor systems. And they started coming with the reports of security assessment, right? right. And they have they are started showing like, you know, your port is open. Your uh, this particular domain, uh, this particular application having, uh, you know, the the uh, the outdated version of uh, you know, uh, Nginx or uh, outdated version of SSL, right? So that's that's something demanding us, like, you know, to have more consolidated dashboards to see our security posture. We need that. Right. We need that to run the business. And the final point is nothing but the law of the land. She was saying, like, you know, uh, it is very tough to implement. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, um, it is coming here in India now, but, uh, you know, other places, like it started with GDPR and uh, other states in the U.S. and Singapore, everywhere this, uh, the, law of the uh, law of the land changing and uh, every uh, every customer is actually demanding for this, uh, you know, regulation, compliance and all. Mm -hmm. So Correct. We, will, we should be able to deliver the reports and everything immediately if something happened, if if something asked, right? So we need this consultation to be done maybe from the IT side. Understood. Uh, uh, Sanjana, ma'am, we missed uh, your take on this. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I mean, I can I can take that. So uh, uh, Sanjana, ma'am, the question again goes to you. If you could talk about you know your own organization. So we've talked about different businesses where they found, uh, a couple of them found you know siloed applications easier to manage from a security standpoint. A uh, few of other, a few others stated that you know it, it it's difficult from a visibility point of view, from an orchestration point of view, or uh, when the necessity is for these applications to talk to each other, etc. So. Uh, you know, for you as, you know, an IT leader or somebody overlooking security, uh, what is what, I mean, what do you uh, prefer? I mean, if you have siloed applications, what kind of challenges uh, have they given rise to and how did you overcome them? To be very honest, I'm yet to overcome any challenge with regard to siloed <laughs> applications. Okay. okay, so just to tell, uh, just to put, uh, to, give a, to give a small brief. So I come from the home automation and the security solutions industry, okay? Uh, this is our 19th year in operation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the one thing that I have often seen is that as technology improves, I mean, this is something that every industry will definitely know. As technology advances, you also have the flip side of viruses, attacks, all the other, the negatives also, which also increase. You know, this is actually a very important area for me. You know, like Sujas sir was actually saying, cloud security, cyber security, all these are very, very important things that are also very, very relevant for me. Right. And the reason why it's very relevant and extremely crucial for me is because I work with multiple brands. Mm -hmm. And even no matter how many, you know, how much of reassurances the brand actually gives you saying that the customer data is safe, nothing is going to be hacked, uh, their privacy is absolutely assured, uh, even if anything is being put up to the cloud, uploaded to the cloud, whatever, whether it be an automation device, whether it even be something in CCTV, something in biometrics, whatever it be, actually speaking, uh, no one's data is actually 100% safe. Right. So this is, in fact, I, I walk a very thin line, to be very honest, because on one hand, I need to give my clients the assurance that their data is not going to be breached at any point of time. But I have also seen instances where some really good brands have had their devices hacked, hmm. have had their routers hacked. That has happened to a couple of my clients, you know. Uh, their firewalls have been breached. So all these are certain things that, uh, you know, those are certain concerns which uh, I have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm always looking for brands, for new technology that can help me actually give my customers a better layer of security. So those are the things that I am genuinely very concerned about when it comes to the networking protocols and, you know, those kind of security kind of issues. I completely agree with Sujas, with, uh, Sujas actually. Cloud mm -hmm. is, is one of the best things to happen. Everyone loves the cloud because it's it's just simply the ease of things. You know, you have your accountant sitting in the office. You can, assuming that he's using a, a cloud software, you know, you can look and see whatever. You can run multiple applications on multiple devices. Everyone can latch onto the same thing. But there are also so many other negatives that tag along with it. Correct. So uh, how do we actually protect the data because you know when you are a system integrator like me i am i am the i am the i am unfortunately or fortunately uh, unconsciously or consciously an ambassador for the brand that i have promoted or suggested mm -hmm. so those are things that 
I'm, you know, that I would really like some more information on. Sure, I second that. You know, we have seen so many instances of uh, breaches due to cloud misconfigurations in the past couple of years. That's 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 a good point you brought up there. Uh, let's quickly move to uh, Shicho, sir. So uh, you've heard all, all of the discussion uh, going on, and uh, you know, if you could share your thoughts around it, how do you reflect it? Uh, with respect to your company, how does it work See, out? Yeah, I'm from manufacturing background. Okay, mm -hmm. so we have presence in more than seven to eight eight countries. Right. But in cyber security and the application side, we are using the, the hybrid, managing the hybrid model we are operating. Mm -hmm. Security side, what we are facing, the once you as a collaborative or uh, collective, once we we did a, find a solution so that we can manage hybrid uh, ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we are lot of we are multiple software we are using to managing the same tools, other tools we because in case I can get all things in a single dashboard, it's better for me. Right. That can see in, when we are using the softwares also, in-house software as I said, in case maybe legacy software or inbuilt software, we cannot able to ensure hundred percent is secure. Right. A lot of things we are facing there. Then while the COVID situation, the VPN. And people are accessing from others. See what are things are happening. We see zero test what they what they said. Hundred percent is zero test. Also, one to some we cannot take predict. The data is see we still steal the data. We can do lot of ways. Mm -hmm. That's this physically happening now. Otherwise, they will at least they will take photo also. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then security side. See, if you are using different solution, we have different vendors. That's a very challenge for me. In case something has happened, they will blame each other because something else, this is not my problem, this is their problem. Okay, this happened because of this. Which, uh, in case something has happened, nobody is responsible for that. This happened with me last time. Right. Okay. Then once we are moving to one software to other software, we need to train the people. The management, administration is very difficult for me. As even switching something to other. That's the basic things. So manufacturing things, we are not, uh, say, banking and all this. Actually, we are only concentrating our employees, but not for the rest. That's it. Understood. Thank you for those points. Now, um, uh, you know, so, so when based on, you know, what you've heard around the room so, uh, so far, you've heard different perspectives. Uh, what are your takeaways? You know, uh, where do you see uh, the Indian enterprise and its, you know, different aspects of cybersecurity, their different necessities? Where do they stand? And uh, where do you see Palo Alto solutions being able to meet these demands? Okay, so first of all, goosebumps when some of you started talking about consolidation and, and silos <laughs> and all of that. And, and the reason for that is, uh, is the way that we as an organization have morphed over the last few years. So I've been working with a few of you. And I, I remember when I joined Palo Alto Networks, we were primarily a next generation firewall company. So most of you would have heard of Palo Alto Networks in that context only. So uh, when I think Prince was talking, one statement that Prince made, I've noted down, siloed applications are the way to go. So which means, and that's actually true. So when, when, when you look at any business today, uh, each of the functions or sub-functions of your business will have different requirements and you will end up using applications that are in some form or fashion siloed. But silos, like someone else was saying, was are possibly the bane of cybersecurity because the moment you have a closed environment that your IT team does not have visibility to, it means that anything can go wrong there. And especially in the context of cloud, right? When I think uh, Sujas and Sanjana were talking about cloud. When you have, uh, I mean, we, we work with customers and we do something called a cloud posture assessment uh, basis uh, are to give them an understanding of what is running on the cloud. And what we've realized is that uh, most of the time, 50% uh, of cloud, they don't have visibility to. And if you don't have, if you can't see something, chances are that you've missed something. So, so what? Uh, so, from a uh, siloed perspective, I totally agree. Uh, from a business angle, there will always be silos within the organization. But as security practitioners, what all of us need to think about is that if you've got, like I think Shijo was saying, right, one single dashboard, sort of a silver bullet, and maybe even sounding like utopia, might not happen now. But if you have a dashboard that gives you comprehensive visibility to everything that happens within your enterprise, that possibly is the best way to look at uh, an organization. Because irrespective of, let's say, a new user trying to access an application, 
we spoke about how uh, when uh, users moved back after uh, moved home uh, for covid when and I, I remember situations where when covid started uh, there were people who were logging into zoom sessions but the name on the zoom sessions were different because the wife was using it for something else earlier and you have no clue who the person is and you suddenly are seeing all sorts of names yesterday I, uh, my wife was doing some yoga this thing and she used my laptop and next day morning when i logged into my zoom session and my uh, and my photo was not on everyone's asking who's adira because I, I, and then i had to go back and change my name so the point that i'm making is when people started working from home the 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 attack surface exploded the visibility suddenly went down uh, by i don't know a magnitude that we've not seen before and uh, overall you la you sort of lost visibility to everything you had people spinning up applications on the fly you had a security operation center which was not getting in the details or alerts or information that was needed to react so which means that uh, the way organizations have changed and they've changed irreversibly over the last few years uh, we can't do without consolidation and uh, so that's where i'd like to stop and i don't want to get into the product side of it right now but from a uh, i totally am in in sync with pretty much every one of you when you said silos are the way to go but consolidation is needed single point visibility is needed and absolute control i think uh, someone is talking about the stages of what happens during a uh, cyber security incident right you want to prevent everything possible correct so when you when you prevent everything possible is preventing only on the network enough might not be because i know we spoke about firewalls yes just doing firewall protection might not be enough because if you've got cloud workloads and you've got a cloud workload that some uh, cloud administrator decided to spin up for the purpose of something that he was doing testing on and that was exposed to the internet without a firewall in place because of a configuration going back going back to what somik was saying because 99% of problems on uh, on cloud can happen because of misconfiguration there's no way a firewall will stop that the same way when you uh, a user tries to access an application from a compromised endpoint which is which can be compromised for whatever reason he might be using his personal laptop to browse through websites that he is not supposed to and he uses that to log into his organization you've got a bigger problem there so consolidation is the way to go how we solve it maybe we can discuss as time progresses and i'll leave it to that all right thanks for that sovin now um, we go to the other next debate that's you know uh, usually brought up so on the it side of it we see one common debate on uh, build versus buy similarly on the security side we see you know uh, there's a little bit of debate on uh, point uh, product based approach versus a full cyber security suite so um, you know what what kind of what are your thoughts around it you know what kind of organizations would would uh, be okay with a point based approach versus you know what are the limitations and uh, what does you know a complete security suite bring to the table if i could start with you ma'am i see definitely now we are facing a big challenge wherein the endpoints are <coughs> having many um, like agents okay uh, agents are getting overloaded in the endpoints and that itself is slowing down the machine so that is also a performance issue for us but as a security leader i i have always have a feel like every person have their own strengths isn't and uh, what i want to do is i want the best in the place and that is what and when you are talking about a single dashboard and all i from my last 20 years i don't believe in that uh, because uh, because there are a lot of uh, practical issues it's not like uh, just what is it cannot be done it can be done but it has lot, its own practical issues and uh, and the second point is like uh, even if uh, we are have the some people as i told you you, you people all to itself is a came as an extent uh, uh, firewall then later on you people started not only you people many of the firewall vendors started coming up with xdr and other solutions because ultimately this is the heat which is coming in the firewall is generated and can be uh, correlated with other endpoint things which we you can further it is a kind of a uh, tomorrow you can even come with a c okay because ultimately it is a data it's already captured in the firewall isn't it and with that correlation only we are going with to explore so that is possible and the single dashboard is possible only if we connect with that but how far this solution is capable to identify that's most important that is my point right um let me quickly move to uh, arvin sir so uh, 
So you operate in a business, you know, you've got 933 branches. So given that scale of operations, uh, what is your approach? You know, uh, would you prefer a full cybersecurity suite or a point product based approach? Look, um, <coughs> I was just uh, listening to Sanjana and, I, you know, she referring to uh, her son. It, our roles are pretty much like that. I mean, you know, in the morning when you are talking to a particular team, Mm -hmm. InfoSec team or the business team. It's like taking your child to a play store or a toy store where every next best thing looks great. So a point <laughs> product uh, looks exceedingly good because it provides great value. And then when we come back home, it's like probably my spouse who thinks that it's like the bull running into a china shop because there is already a whole stack of things and this new thing is going to kill the whole environment. So that's the point. The point is that I think it's a real myth, it's something like a Sisyphus uh, myth where you are, in IT you go through these cycles, at some point we keep saying that the best thing is consolidation, then we figure out that the stone has rolled down, so we again start off by saying that look, we need to look at uh, point product solutions also. Mm -hmm. my, think, uh, my, my thinking always on this has been that after spending reasonable time, you have to take an approach of to have the right kind of houses for the course. Rather than, you know, go by any philosophy which looks very appealing at this point of time. To that extent, what we try to do is to ensure that uh, we have the right uh, sort of, uh, you know, pieces in the jigsaw puzzle. Uh, wherever we feel there is a lot of value in the single pane, etc., definitely we do that. But my take on this, and I'm sure uh, Prince and others can add on, is that more than looking at it from a single pane or a consolidation point of view, I would place a lot of premium on two things. One is automation capabilities, irrespective of whether I have 100 applications, do I have the capability to automate most of that? And then obviously, as Babila was mentioning, the capability to integrate many of them so that none of them remain as silos in any case. If right. these two are in place, I'm not really worried too much about whether I have a single neck to catch. And in that, that case, what I, I mean, what I heard is that, you know, you don't need to run around 10 different people, as Shiva was mentioned. See, if, even if you have one vendor, the scenario is not very different. And, uh, I don't know whether Suvin would agree, but then the change is that instead of 10 necks in 10 organizations, One. within the organization, there are 10 necks that you will have to follow up. Yep. So that's not really adding too much of value. But as I mentioned, horses for courses is what I believe is the right approach. Well, thank you for that. Um, let me quickly move to uh, uh, Srinath. Now, uh, Srinath, uh, Arvind sir brought you know, a pretty good point on uh, the necessity to automate. And we saw this, you know, happening when the log 4G uh, vulnerability actually, you know, spread all over. Uh, there was a lot of, you know, difficulty security, CISOs were facing with their security teams. Uh, in addition to, you know, the visibility, in addition to the automation part of it, what else would you be looking at if you're looking at a full security suite uh, when compared to a point-based point -based approach? So actually, uh, my take on it's like, you know, you need to analyze what are your needs. Okay. Because uh, when you uh, talk about security, it comes under confidentiality, integrity, and availability, right? You need to analyze where you need to invest more. Uh, in my company, I invest on availability. It's very important for me because we are into a newspaper business, right? So uh, I need to invest more into availability of my things. Then uh, for uh, other part, like, you know, different security suits, right? For what we do the, in my office is we do lots of pro proof of concepts. We buy, we ask, uh, I think Ajit, may, uh, our sales engineer, you know, Palo Alto, I may agree that. Because mm -hmm. I ask him, call him and tell, tell him, right, you have a new product. So come and show me what it can do. So we do lot of POCs, proof of concept. Then we openly talk about technology, then analyze what's happening, with what is the pros of that product and compare with the competitor. Then if the product wins that, you know, wins that, then we take that product into our uh, infrastructure. Then what we do that, we also check whether it can be integrated with other products also. For my case, I have a, I have integrated my next generation firewall with my NAC, and NAC is again integrated with my uh, endpoint protection, okay. and and it can also integrate on my seam. So I will get a, more more like a single pane of plus view, view. view and also we, it is comes under layered security because if palo alto stack fails right it will come uh, the my endpoint protection will save it like that you know it uh, that's the beauty of you know point bit that 
the suit based things cannot do that because if you are uh, trusting one company for my security right so i in security always layered security is my opinion is like layered security is most important thing to do all right i see your point there shrinath i mean it's like putting all your eggs in the yeah. a, a, in one basket uh so just coming to you would you want a specialist like uh you know surya kumar yadav or an all rounder like hardik pandya in your team <laughs> no uh, actually the uh, my opinion is uh, all products especially like a product like palo alto it's extraordinary in security side uh, but the problem is in an organization if we have money we can buy any product but the problem is how many people knows how to configure and manage properly that device that is the real challenge wherever we are asking everywhere we implemented firewalls or security solutions or endpoint security how many of uh, them are 100% aware about that security layers and uh, breaches in regards to that particular product there lies the relevance uh, uh, of the product instead of product a buying product everyone is taking care of the global scenarios but the challenge is uh, we can buy a security a palo alto uh, firewall or router whatever it may be but the challenge is actually uh, the configuration part the same uh, sony sir mentioned uh, where we blame mm-hmm. because 50% actually they mentioned that that port is open that is missed out someone else or that other one is missed out that's why i earlier also mentioned the expertization is really relevant in that area there lies the uh, 50% part of security rather than the product so that's what my thought in that area all right thanks for that uh, uh sanjana or you know it's actually open to anyone here uh, has anyone actually tried both approaches you know a point based approach versus adopting a full security suite and what what have been your observations in your uh, organization Okay yeah I have uh, actually tried both I personally am more for uh, a one uh, you know a solution which has which covers everything from a to z and for me the reason why this this may be a bit selfish but uh, the way I see it is see the customer basically doesn't want to spend too much of time thinking about what went wrong right mm-hmm. when i get a call when i'm when i'm informed that there has been a breach of security something has gone wrong something has bypassed the firewall whatever it is for me my main concerns at that time are number one i need to i need to identify the problem quickly i need to address it quickly i need to get the required support quickly uh when it comes to you know configuration or when it comes to customization of uh, solutions depending upon you know the particular organization department so and so i think getting everything on board together becomes a bit of a hassle but i agree with what mr arvind did say you know if there's a bit of automation that can come right. at the end of the day i believe technology is here and is supposed to make our lives easier whether you're the client who's using it benefiting from it or whether i'm the system integrator or the person supplying it we both want uh, we both want to be benefited by it so if there's a bit of automation that can come in if there's any way that can help a client identify the problem and can help me identify the problem and address it quickly i'm all for it and i have seen that happen more with you know not with end to end solutions really but more in in suites you know where you know you have uh, you have software that that can address a uh, multiple you know issues on, on at, at the same time that's oh. that's my personal take all right let me quickly check with uh, prince prince what are your thoughts on this and the dna is about certain things that you really will so my first option will always be i will go look for what is best of breed does the best of breed fit my need or do i have any room for compromise in terms of what are, what is what is it driving me right for me if i'm running the it organization you also set some standards for yourself saying that this is what we baseline for firewalls for you you might even go to this extent of saying uh, my perimeter has to be palo alto i don't care which one but it has to be palo alto that's the only name i care about why because when i'm sitting in front of my customer and if i'm showing him some diagrams and if i show this logo there it makes a it makes him feel more comfortable more confident that's what's important to me 
So there are areas where that doesn't matter. If I'm looking at internal firewalling, if I'm looking at segmentation, if I'm looking at a lot of things internally, I don't really need those things. I can look at other ways to do it. So it looks right. for, I mean, I look for, you know, what will help me meet that, uh, that customer ask, that business need. Uh, but my first choice is always what is best of breed because that will deliver. All right. Um, Mr. Vinay, uh, I, I did see a wry uh, smile on your face, so I would love to hear your thoughts on it as well. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the choice in this matter. Okay. Because uh, as I said, we, we sort of mirror what our clients require. And so we have... Uh, all sorts of uh, tools and products, and we have to test against each of that. So uh, we don't, I, I, I won't say that I have a preference or I have a say, actually. I only have a say in perhaps telling them that, okay, these, the, the difficulty that I fi find is that many of these products are bought mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, where configuration, they are not updated, patched regularly, we, we find cases, uh, okay, the, the, the latest case is now, uh, I have all endpoint security and now the endpoints have changed. What, what are people bringing in? They're, they're working from their uh, mobiles, tablets, uh, you know, keeping track of that becomes more difficult. I, I don't know, the, the tools themselves are great. And right. like, like uh, we, in fact, we try to automate some of this ourselves, but, uh, the end of the day, uh, I think it is the people, the, uh, as uh, uh, was rightly pointed out, the expertise, not just the expertise, you know, the, there is the motivation. When you buy the new product, there's the motivation to, uh, you know, be after it. But the dedication to ensure that that, is, that process is followed, that's very, very important, I think. All right, thanks for that. Let me quickly get a, a voice from the manufacturing space. Uh, Shiru, so your, your thoughts on this uh, when it comes to, you know, a, a complete security suite or a point product-based approach? Yes, we are going with complete. Anyway, nobody is providing. I, I don't know. Anybody, anybody, anybody is providing more solutions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. But, but it has to be integrated. It's got to communicate to each other and can be automated. That's the best <clears> according to me. See, somebody is using open source also is communicating with other software and through API and also getting better results. Right. They are protecting their infrastructure. Okay. That's not all right. Uh, let me move to Suvin. Suvin, I'm obviously not going to ask you which one's better, but then um, what what are the things that, you know, as an open security suite, what are the things that have started incorporating the best of breed uh, points that, you know, uh, people here have pointed out? Uh, when it comes to uh, point-based solutions. Yeah, so uh, once again, I mean, great conversations. Thank you for all of the insights that you've given given us so far. It helps us do better. It helps us to understand what customers are going through today and what organizations like yours are doing today. So I'll just pick up from what a few of you said and then give my give you my perspective. And, and this is more from a security practitioner standpoint rather than Palo Alto Networks. So uh, I'll start with what Purin said. He said, I'd rather prefer best of breed than, than, than actually go for a consolidation approach. So a sort of a, a segue on that point that you made, if a similar, if you do a apple to apple comparison between two products, one which your functional requirements remain the same, which means that you need visibility, you need control, you need security, you need all of the efficacy. You've got one point product vendor who actually does all that, you've got a platform vendor that does pretty much the same thing, exactly the same thing. And the platform product also has the added advantage of contributing to your centralized intelligence, centralized visibility, and all of that. In that case, would you go platform or best of breed? That part, that feature, may not, may not be meeting my... Absolutely. Absolutely. I understand. From my experience, it will be great. See, chasing the single pane of glass has been the holy grail for many, many decades. Yes. For many organizations, from the days in, in the Gulf of Emirates, we've been trying to find out, you know, is there a single pane of glass for IT? There isn't. There isn't. Yeah. No, I, I mean, even I, even if you ask me, there's no, there is no, that's why I said when I said single pane of glass or or a single to, to what Sony server was saying, right? There is a one single console that gives you anything. There's no single console that gives you anything. So to me, if the competency is an extension of what you're, what you're doing as your core, and it's something that I need as a as a feature to be made available in my organization, then I would be interested. Yes. Because it's just an add-on. Correct. 
not something diametrically opposite. And Absolutely. They also do this and yeah. So so which means and and that's that's coming back to I think a couple of statements that the others also made. If you look at uh, security today, the way security is going, right? Uh, every new function, feature, or infrastructure investment that an organization has today needs to be secure in some manner. So, which means that there needs to be a corresponding security investment. So, if you start doing, let's say, a new cloud environment, you need to secure it. You need to st you start doing DevOps, you need to secure it. You start uh, investing in someone is talking, uh, speaking about endpoints. You you start doing endpoints, and you suddenly realize that. New Chromebooks have come up and then you need to support that. So every new investment, I'll go back to what Sony was saying in the beginning, is has to have a security wrapper. And each time you decide to invest, and organizations across the world uh, where we've been working with, and the reason we've been consolidating is because we've seen that every new investment in security, if it happens with a new OEM or a new product vendor, chances are that the number of GUIs that you need to use to manage that infrastructure goes up substantially. So what we are seeing today, Symantec has sort of exited that space, if you look at it. And they, they were sort of uh, in, in, in web, they were in, in network, they were in endpoint. They've sort of exited that space. And if you look at uh, other ecosystems in the infrastructure, let's take storage, let's take servers, let's take cloud infra, uh, there, is, there has been consolidation. So if you look at, if you look at cloud, uh, I, I worked with HCL, HCL Infosystems, and way back in 2007 or 8, we launched a cloud of our own. Does it exist today? No. We, it's sort of consolidated into three. So you've got the AWSs of the world, you've got the GCPs of the world, you've got the Azures of the world. Everywhere that consolidation is happening. And it is of paramount importance that that consolidation needs to happen in security. And especially today, if you look at it, uh, with the Silicon Valley Bank closing down and, and a lot of money getting stuck everywhere, people who were uh, doing, let's say, $50 million of business with a new niche product that was serving some specific function, a lot of them will go out of business. So which means that uh, there is, if there is, and I'm not asking you to, uh, as, a, as a security practitioner, I'm, I'm not here to tell anyone on this table to look at Palo Alto Networks as the only option. No. That, that's the, as because I'm not, uh, you, I mean, my colleagues will tell me, I'm not sales. I, I don't intend selling. I don't, this is not a sales conversation at all. But when you evaluate a product, evaluate it for its strengths. You know what your requirements are better than anybody. All of you today have given us insights into what you are facing as challenges. You face challenges with cloud. You face challenges with acquisitions. I think, Sugish, you were mentioning you have eight acquisitions that you've done in the last two years. You, you have problems of visibility. You have problems of integration with other solutions that you're using. You know your functional requirements better than anybody else. When you evaluate a security product, make sure that you evaluate it based on your functional requirements. And if there is, an, there is a chance of evaluating it as a platform, it reduces your overall uh, headache in terms of management, in terms of visibility. So that, I leave it to that, uh, uh, Somik. All right, all right. Great. Uh you know, summing up of all the points that we've heard here today. Now, uh, the next question again is uh, a, a very core topic uh, to the Indian community. I mean, as a community, we are obsessed with kitna deti hai. So, so you know, it boils down to security as well. Uh, there's a lot of talk on the return on security investments. So, when it comes to um, return on investment, uh, what are your views? What are your thoughts around uh, the impact of consolidation? on the optimization of security tools. Let me start with uh, Benusa. So in fact, uh, yeah, I was uh, listening to all the inputs, yep, agree and uh, disagree uh, in certain angles. So when you look into the heterogeneity, so different, so for example, I mean, you think about a legacy system in use, so then you need to have a different approach. So if you have an ideal system and then you go for the consolidation, um, it is uh, more into a trust uh, threat uh, versus challenge kind of the challenge is something uh, which we can address we know but the threat is we feel I mean we cannot address when you look into the uh, non-consolidation so there are challenges rather than threats where uh, you have uh, integration problems you have uh, a lot of other kind of which you can manage or you can address but the threats we cannot so that's why the importance of the consolidation comes there and uh, that way it is cost effective going to be so basically as all of us know we cannot reduce the attacks 
more right. getting sophisticated rather what we can do is reducing the successful attacks so to make it fail so as exactly as uh, you can write uh, Srinath mentioned so these kind of consolidation will provide layered kind of protection and approaches so that's one thing I mean that way I mean if you look into so basically that's what we are looking into right yeah. Uh, uh, Sanjana, I would uh, like to really check with you. You've tried both approaches. Uh, from a cost optimization point of view, what have been your observations? Okay, personally speaking, for me, uh, most of my clients come in the middle segment. And when I say middle segment, what I mean is that they are not probably names, uh, you know, like a Microsoft or even a Lulu group or, you know, probably on that scale. Uh, for me, to be very honest, uh, see, I believe that you, you don't necessarily need to be a company earning an X amount of income or a certain amount of revenue every year to be actually looking at networking products or even looking at any protocol uh, seriously. I think, you know, these kind of products that even, uh, you know, that, that we are all familiar with should actually be something that should even be, you know, installed in, in a very small company because, you see, threats... A hacker or any of these people, they aren't really just going for the big guys. They can be going for anybody whose data is being compromised, anybody who's, uh, you know, who they feel really haven't uh, taken whatever measures are needed. So I am always looking to actually look and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get, uh, we need to actually change the conversation from only looking at, you know, protecting bigger networks and also bring the conversation down to protecting smaller networks. Smaller companies also need to be protected. Networking and, you know, these kind of things aren't just for the big, for the big right. names. You have, I mean, you're talking about, uh, you know, a really billion dollar industry over here. You're talking about India runs primarily on Kirana shops and on the middle class. I mean, come on. That is that is the, that is the fact, right? So we've got to actually bring down networking. We have we have really got to think of solutions for people on that scale, and you know who may be doing just small amount of business as well, because they are also at risk. Right. So that is that is my point. Understood. Let me look at the uh, you know opposite end of the scale. Let me quickly check with uh, Anil sir. So you know you've uh, based on your observation on a conglomerate like the Lulu Group. What have been your observations on? Uh, you know, how have you been able to maximize your return on security investments, uh, especially with respect to consolidation-based approaches? Yeah. So that uh, the first point which we, which we should look at is it's a journey, right? And as someone said, expertise is something which is the key, right? Mm -hmm. Today, what is expertise may not be true tomorrow. So to, should I bring, make, create a army for myself at my organization and show that as a cost? Or should I just go to someone who knows it, who's working in the space, and try to stitch upon all the products which you have? I may not have the best of the breed, right. but which is right for my organization and my need, as rightly said, my functions I know better than anyone else. If I can put on my roadmap to them, and they can come back and tell me, you know what, this suits you now, for the next jump, please go to this. At that time, you can evaluate it. So for me, the ROI lies in not creating an army in internally, Mm -hmm. Because expertise and skill sets are a huge challenge in the market. Right. Rather than go with someone who can stitch all these bundles together, maybe 10 number of products, but bundle it in such a way that it protects my current need. Mm -hmm. And as I progress in this journey, they come with us. It's not a vendor, but more of a partner. Growth partner is what we will be looking at at this point of time. All right. Uh, Manjush, ma'am, may I, may I quickly hear your thoughts on it as well? I fully agree with Anil. Because uh, our team is a very small team, we are uh, only four member team. Taking care of the entire divisions, we have five locations, mm -hmm. outside Kerala two locations. And we take care of the entire IT, hardware, software, networking, <coughs> security, connectivity, everything. And our company is listed, uh, so and we have audits every quarter, every uh, year from uh, statutory as well as others. And we have IT audits also coming up. Every year we have to do that. So we have to be, uh, and our key key objectives are uh, network downtime zero, uh, zero server downtime, uh, no security lapses. That is our uh, objective for ISO and all. So we have to see that data is 100% secure. And across the organization, everything should be like that, should be kept tight. But due to the growing demands, as I said earlier, we are having many asks, like uh, Sababida told from every department, 
they are not thinking about the security or something but they want something to be implemented for their requirement right and but our company is a pro, uh, manufacturing company and the most of the their concentration is on the production and mm -hmm. the profit so my role is to ensure that they we, they get the correct deliverables but with the with the, the high added security so roi is not much of a factor but we take uh, like palo alto also i think with the we have uh, having discussions we would like to go for an edr solution or xdr solution like that we were thinking of that consultation uh, for me consultation would be good because our team is very small so okay. we would like to uh, give the entire and outsource the entire thing mostly we outsource we have the endpoint and the firewall things outsourced to a single party so no uh, clash in between mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, until now but in between <laughs> <laughs> yeah for two persons maybe uh, we'll have to run uh, run after the firewall team what is what has happened some issue happens like you might as well told, manage it yourself yeah right? yeah uh, it's very difficult if someone takes if my infra guy is on leave mm -hmm. then i'll have to run around and go <laughs> left when uh, all the team and that that's very hell of a task for me Right. So we have been managing quite well so far, and now we are thinking of a consolidated solution. We will like to evaluate all the teams, and then we, for us, we have to have minimum three quotations like that, uh, similar. Then we will have to uh, um, discuss with the clients, their customers, how these people are working, what, how this they support the service after sales, all those things. And a cost-effective solution we will have to present. The note approval system is there. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a task for a purchase procedure is very high for uh, huge for us and our. Uh, these auditors, they come up and ask questions why you uh, gone for this which is higher in price, then you have to justify that. It's like that. So, anyway, but ROI is not much of a uh, problem because we have to uh, see that they won't, top management won't interfere in whatever I am doing because okay. they, they are concentrating more on the production side, but we have to see that not any lapses are happening for the data security and backups are in time on taken on time or uh, restoration is in uh, progress and we have to do the dr drills every six months like all those things we have to take care right small team i'm doing that i hope to my best <laughs> absolutely we wish you the best too now quickly uh, you know as as a last question i would want uh, you know quick uh, three quick takeaways from uh, you people when it comes to you know building an ai powered next gen sock what kind of capabilities are you looking for uh, in a next gen sock uh, and what kind of capabilities are you wanting to adopt in the next you know year or so uh, let me start with uh, prince okay i think i'm just going to pick up terms that i heard through the through the day right so let's look at an next-gen SOC that can really consolidate um, inputs and logs coming from all sources and do it really well. Okay. And I think the you know the, the SOC part is very relevant because I'm actually looking at an evaluation right now and we're, we're doing certain things there. So the power of the, the SOC would be in what it's going to filter out and make actionable. Uh, so the SIM part of it really needs to work excellently well. So that's one. Then the automation piece, so your auto orchestration, your SOAR piece works. And there are certain things you don't have to worry about. So, uh, you know, it's not like we have never been breached, but you know that certain things did happen. Uh, the, the flood of events was missed, uh, but we did get notification. So when right. you look at that, I want to, to never have those sort of uh, recurrences of that. Um, I'll, I'll just leave with those two for now. No problem. Uh, Baby time, I'm going to check, quickly check with you. Yeah, before I go to that question, I just want to answer about the ROI. Mm -hmm, sure. Even if we are going for an integrated solution, like what you say, I don't think there is a, uh, I have to pay less money because you people will be selling it as a module. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not, not me. Okay, whoa, okay. I'm just, so that, 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 that finger was pointing at me. <laughs> so, clubbing that integrated solution with ROI, I don't accept it. Okay. That's my first point. And the second part is like, uh, uh, like when we are talking about the capability of the solution, no? mm -hmm. we are talking about the endpoints and other things. I have seen many integrated solutions who have claimed that that uh, definitely I will say that our operational cost will come down. With the integrated solution, operational cost will definitely come down. And the uh, if we have to deploy three or four uh, human resources, we can cut down to two. That I agree. But efficiency or performance well, I don't uh, see anything. Uh, if I'm going more into the security aspect, I don't mm, see or uh, you have to prove us that the solution which 
it has been provided like a silo solution like a, a XDR or EDR who is meant for that, what mm -hmm. and all facilities they are giving, your solution is able to give to that, then it is fine. Anyway, we are paying for it. Right. Either them or you. So that that we should get. But just for the operational efficiency, we are not supposed to go for that. Oh, no. okay, then uh, coming back to uh, SOC. Mm -hmm. uh, integrated SOC, next-gen SOC, already we are into that. Okay. Uh, whenever we talk about the SOC, I always feel why we need a SOC. If we are already going for a next-gen SOC, which is we already have the uh, data with us, and we have all the logs with us, we have the alerts with us, events in that, then why we have to go for another source solution? Why it is named as that? We can correlate the instances and we can come up with a, uh, we can reduce the false positive. Mm -hmm. So, because the same thing, but I don't know again, it could be because of ROI from the <laughs> OEMs, you would have named it <laughs> some other thing. And uh, you have rightly mentioned that now Symantec has wiped off. And we are investing so much of money with the expectation that earlier antivirus, we felt like, okay, that will take care of everything. Then came EDR. Now no one wants to talk about EDR also. Within a year, EDR went to XDR. Now within a year, XDR will say, go to something else. Yeah, then we yeah. will be still it's in the India. same room or <laughs> talking about that. <laughs> so that is another point. So IT and technology is an investment area. And some in some talk, someone asked me, ma'am, our company is not that big. When it comes to security, we have to invest a lot. Uh, I want the big, big firewalls and all those things. How can I do that? For me, I can do security even without all these things. I have to define what actual functionalities, how my business have to go. For that, sometimes I may not need a security aspect, so like a firewall itself, because I, I won't connect to the network. I don't want to communicate with the internet. Only those things need to communicate with the internet, I have to go for the security. So that is uh, up to the how I want to do the business. So money, we can define uh, what level of security, what we want. Then uh, so I think I have hopefully I have answered everything. He purposefully did not want me to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Just for you. All right. Uh, Arvind sir, may I quickly uh, check with you again? Purposely, I would want you to, uh, you know, share your thoughts on, do you think a next-gen uh, SOC, AI-powered next-gen SOC would eliminate the need for having, you know, other investments like a SOAR, et cetera, other solutions? I mean, the first thing is that, as Babida mentioned, um, security, actually, we keep saying that it's a very rosy picture. It's not ROI. It's rosy. So uh, the, the return on security investment is zilch. Mm -hmm. You don't need to go to anyone to say that I would earn this much, I would earn that much. There's no cost-benefit analysis. And the best ones uh, generally know when to time the whole investment. I mean, it's generally done when there is a whole scare out there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's very easy to scare uh, uh, in, into investment. Jokes apart. I mean, uh, look, I think this is probably one of the most important questions that uh, needs a lot of deliberation and discussion because as uh, enterprises, we are really worried about uh, the emerging technologies like AI, adversarial AI, uh, that's happening quantum computing that's happening. Today, we are basing all our discussions on premises, which probably is becoming a little challenging. So, um, because the, 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 the problem that we have on this side of the fence is that we need to get it right every time. Whereas for an adversary, right. just once. So I keep thinking about this problem from a Swiss cheese kind of example. Whenever you have a breach of any kind, big, small, it's always when some of those holes align, as in a Swiss cheese. Because otherwise, as Srinath was mentioning, you have layered defense in depth and all of that. And at some point, it gets caught. But in hindsight, whenever this kind of a thing has happened, uh, that's where the challenge generally is. And that's where we would want the good side of AI to get deployed in, in a very extensive manner so that two problems can be knocked off. One is, of course, that the technology is smart enough and it's learning. So I'm not looking at a signature which is two days old, I'm looking at something and I'm able to predict something pretty fast. Second is the problem that uh, Anil and uh, some others were mentioning about the gap of skills in the security industry, the reliance on human minds to help protect a perimeter which is not there anymore. I think it's only possible if you invest heavily in AI-based solutions 
especially on the cyber security side. And uh, I think, as she was mentioning, all of us are invested in some way or the other, and it's, it's doing on. Thank you for that. Uh, let me quickly check with uh, Suryas, your parting thoughts on an AI-powered next-gen SOC. Really, it's, it's a need of the time. Uh, th that's a single word. Uh, and uh, uh, obviously, we know currently we are, mostly we are discussing about uh, OpenAI or ChatGPT. Whatever the questions you are asking, we will get the excellent answers than anyone from ChatGPT immediately. But actually, the relevance in regards to uh, security industry, uh, mostly actually AI powering the comparison. That means they need to compare with the latest information. Only then AI will be more accurate. So... Uh, anyway, AI, AI we need to connect with, the, what are the AI engine in a security environment? We need to connect with the internet, otherwise it won't work properly. The reason is, uh, without uh, updates, uh, without updation, a accuracy of the AI will be very limited. So, in that case itself, the security breaches, uh, sometimes we need to speak about that area also. So anyway, we want to welcome AI, absolutely that's relevant because uh, as everyone mentioned, uh, the shortage of uh, uh, skilled employment, skilled manpower in this industry, uh, from morning to evening, everyone is actually just watching the monitor. I'm 100% sure, even if they are sitting in front of the monitor from morning to evening, uh, they will miss out a lot of information. That is right. for sure. Anyway, for the namesake, we are sitting. Uh, in between, we will lose. That, that, that's the relevance of AI. Anyway, uh, we can, but that comparison, that human intelligence we need to add through experience or public knowledge. That knowledge we need to integrate in, uh, in the security system, that's really relevant. That's really a, a very important for the next generation. Anyway. Correct. And your statements align with, you know, what uh, a lot of people in the industry are talking about, the need for explainable AI uh, dangers of AI poisoning, etc. Uh, Anil, quickly, your parting thoughts, please. Uh, Next-gen AI, what kind of capabilities are you looking for? Next-gen SOC. Okay, first of all, I'll just take a leave from what he spoke about, chat GPT. If you mm -hmm. don't ask the right question, you'll not get the right answer. <laughs> right? So no matter what AI you have and what not, if you're not putting in, in the right place, I don't think you're getting the output. Right. right. Secondly, I want to have an end-to-end -end AI. That if they're in, you're integrating 10 tools to each other, right? One is AI driven and others are not AI driven. Doesn't make any sense for you, right? So you may be having layered uh, security, but if one layer passes it off and everyone also passes it off, right? As rightly said, the cheese, Swiss cheese. Yep. I mean, I think you're dead for that. The last part is how much of this output, whatever comes in, are really translatable into uh, real world uh, fixing issues and some things like that. That is something which we will have to work on. Understood. So one point which has come to my mind is uh, really for the next gen SOC is threat intelligence. Okay. The threat intelligence feeds we have, if normally what we have to now, we are integrating the three threat intelligence feeds to the fire, uh, firewalls and all, if any malicious IP. Instead of that, use cases should be automatically driven in the SOC. That is what uh, any new thing uh, which you have to come up with, that is what is required. Because use case should be there. See, otherwise, I have if I am putting a rule in the firewall, it will block the IP. That is for sure. But if something happening in somewhere in the world, the use case itself is being integrated. In the this any 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 of the endpoints is getting compromised. Now we don't follow the IPs and all backlisted IP because it changes often. So, here yeah, yeah, indicator of attack. That is what uh, we have to look into. And how that can be correlated in the scene is what you have to think for the so next just, so. just to add to that one, see right yeah. now the problem is we are talking about AI as though it's going to come in some commercial product, but it's already in the hands of of, of malicious operators. Yes. So yes. we are already too late. Yes. Yeah. So this is this becomes a real worry now because we don't have the tools yet. By the time you come up with the tools. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that can be made available in the scene. Yeah, that, because we are that. having the exactly. locks of it. But that was the uh, point I was trying to mention. Prince already mentioned because whether we welcome AI or not, so there are 
lot of people so oh, well, they so, so when you say oh, welcome, i yeah. think that's the reason why elon musk said let's stop development of a exactly. of a for the next 6 months you want yeah. some time but he's using it for uh, this he's using it for different things that's the problem yeah. <laughs> because he's musk you can say it ai <laughs> yes. is also dangerous oh yes yeah. because it is a teaching the system if you are giving false comments like what we are using for chat abg gpt what we say that if we are training in a different way it can be a problem which we may not be aware of and we'll come to know only when something goes wrong yeah. right that's pure maturity right. where we are speaking about each organization each individual is in a different maturity phase right are we asking the right question is something which we are so coming at and is like, uh, we cannot be without ai because that is the volume of data is we are we are handling every day i think but only no, we, thing is we, we can have be have without ai we can be without ai if we have silos and you don't connect to no, anything no 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 no, <laughs> no, 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 no even even that is what we started with even with yeah. <laughs> no, 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 even without connecting to a network ai is because because the volume of data we are handling is that much okay even if i am not connecting to any external network only thing is security feature but does if i am using usb that is enough no i am not connecting to the network Just it is a, the stuff that was flopped yeah yeah <laughs> yes. that is that is more than enough no if you ai throws throws out a list of things to do how many expertise are there here to really resolve that that's nothing see if you fail if you if you are failing most of them why are we looking for socks and others is why can't we create our own right why can't we if we go back to the question like why can't we create our own and why are we looking at third party and others to create something for us is purely because if something comes out from there also we there is there is a lot of gap between what's the reality what's happening and where we stand right so try to close that out uh, right one point uh, when we uh, think about the so the, let's uh, keep um, and chat gpt is a start side and i mean AI the other side because chat gpt anyway the data which is fed is uh, not there it's a kind of human poc so that's the other side Uh, when we think about the AI based SOC, so definitely uh, that is helpful for the automation. That's a prime. Mm-hmm. But what the extreme case can be, like I mean, I suggested the maybe a use case kind of augmenting the analyst or users. So that can be the extreme uh, where we can uh, look into and I mean then they generating the solutions. So if that we are able to achieve, but at the same time, as Prince said, I mean the other side there are challenges. the same kind of capabilities but this has to go on and we need to reduce the success attacks so that's mm-hmm. what we can do correct i think we haven't yet seen the tip of the iceberg when it comes to ai powered bots uh, anyway you know uh, a lot of content for uh, cocktail conversations uh, we're going to table that for now uh, for now you know i think i would like to thank everyone all of you panelists here for your great uh, observations your great points you've shared your insights your experiences with us and uh, there's some great takeaways for you know both me as a journalist as well as uh, you know palo alto here so with that uh, i would uh, you know want to uh, invite soven uh, to take the stage for a quick uh, you know presentation or a quick session on what he's taken away from this conversation <laughs> so thank you very much and i don't intend ma- taking more than 5 minutes at the last last 5 minutes were sort of heated conversations <laughs> all of us on the same side so it's like attackers are incre- attacks are increasing attackers are increasing everyone's using ai ml and all of us are still fighting with each other so it's not uh, it's it's been an extremely enlightening conversation over the last i think hour or so and i'd like to thank uh, with somic all of you for being so participative and what i want to leave uh, you with today is just a perspective and don't take the product names i'm not going to talk products i'm not going to talk technology or, or what the offerings that palo alto networks have but i'm going to tell you where we are headed and i'm hoping that the vision that we have and what we intend doing sort of resonates not only with all of you but with also our competitors in the field because finally it needs uh, like all of you said some form of consolidation is mandatory in the cyber security space and like i said it's it, it's not only palo alto networks and that's why my my next few slides are titled time for uh, security consolidation i had a slide that had eggs in one basket but i decided to skip that slide because somebody said eggs in one basket is a discussion that we don't want to do today so uh skipping all of this so if you look at uh, our conversations with customers over the last one one and a half years right especially after covid broke out uh best of breed is a word that has been sort of misused or overused correct and best of breed was relevant <laughs> no best of breed was relevant best of breed was relevant and at a time when 
uh, if you if you look at back look back at what what the way we see it right every time a new vulnerability is disclosed there is a race to patch it which means that when i when for example intel or microsoft uh, uh, calls out a cve i we have customers reaching out to ask us when did you re release a signature for this so which means that the race to signatures every oem is on top of and like what babita man was mentioning threat intelligence there are 100 vendors that do it today recorded future anomaly all of these people actually do threat intel and their job is to get you indicators of compromise indicators of vulnerabilities indicators of attacks campaigns all of that right so the security industry as such has reached a stage where from a base security functionality perspective pretty much everyone achieves what what they need to and you've got the, these offshoots and small players and niche players who provide security for a spe specific function like for example if you look at cloud if you decide to shift to the devops side where i'm sure that a lot of you are doing platform and application development application development securing it when the application is written when the iac is written so when you're building out cloud applications infrastructure as code is one piece would you rather secure that uh, infrastructure in runtime when it's already deployed across 1000 containers or would you rather have the vulnerability sorted out when the person is writing code you'd rather do it earlier there are people who actually do iac code scanning as a standalone functionality and charge a cost for it so rather than actually going towards all of these best of breed products that offer one functionality alone and then actually trying to integrate it with the last point that we were talking about an autonomous or an ai based sock there is the possibility of going platform and today and that's why if you look at it babita ma'am you were saying we started off with ngfw and then we said we'll start doing multiple things right and that is why all security oems today are in a race to become more comprehensive and which is why you you take any of our established competitors any of our, any of the competitors out there in the market who are doing more than one thing you will always hear them speak about one more one more one more and the others will get lost on the way so what the message is finally there is a possibility to go platform also you can do best of breed because it's always there you uh, and like i said right we do not want any of our any of the organizations that we work with and let me say i'm not saying any of the customers that we work with any of the organizations that we work with you might be a prospect you might be a competitor's customer no worries we don't want any one of you to compromise on your security functionalities when you evaluate uh, uh, features or functions for the sock when you're building an autonomous sock look at your functionalities look at the best products that products that meet your functionalities evaluate against that but if it's possible for you to adopt it with the platform in mind it makes much more sense so just to sort of this is the only sales slide that i have i'll stop it with this the way we are looking at consolidation today there are three distinct areas where we where organizations can start looking at consolidation first is the is the network uh, network piece and that has relevance primarily because the way we work has changed the way we work has changed we, we uh, when covid started i bought a, ho a house in bangalore and i shifted like 25 kilometers away from my current office because i assumed i would not go back to work but today i'm going to office 5 days a week so it's changed it's changed irreversibly i'm working even now but network security like what sony sir was mentioning is no longer boundary bound there are no fixed perimeters any longer and you need to bring together everything that is ne needed from a network security perspective into one umbrella so that's one piece of consolidation that you can go for the second part is cloud security cloud security for those of you are into cloud there there are acronyms that gartner comes up with every i think 6 hours or so now because uh, every new uh, every day you open the newspaper gartner will have some new acronym to put and half of it is re is related with cloud so you'll heard hear words like cspm you'll hear hear words like cwpp you'll you hear words like cnap you all sorts of words but and there'll be a hundred providers providing security solutions for all of them so the problem there is once again a problem of plenty you have a hundred providers providing cloud security but your end goal is only one secure your cloud so start looking at clouds uh, at consolidating cloud security and the last piece is security operations we heard about detection response we heard about automation we heard about edr going away and xdr coming into play and saying that in one year we'll hear something new in one year the entire industry is going to be talking about 
not only bringing together detection and response capabilities across the enterprise, but also automation capabilities into the same tool. So which means that I am able to prevent across the enterprise, I am able to detect and respond across the enterprise, I am able to bring in threat intel from any source that is needed onto the same platform, and I am also able to automate, like what Prince was saying, with orchestration, automation and response. So the world is moving towards consolidation for all of these three. Network security, cloud security, and security operations. And when you're evaluating products, the end goal is to meet, at least start looking at consolidating across these three. And we've got products around all that. And everyone, if you, uh, including our competitors, will start talking about this the way you're seeing it on screen today. And you can reach out to us. Like I said, I'm not talking products. I'm not giving you a single name of a product that we are actually positioning. But that's the goal that we have. Cool. With that, thank you. I'll hand it over back to you, Swamik. Thanks so much. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, that was Mr. Suvin uh, Mulasheril. Uh, you got my name right. I get a one now? You get a one now. All right. Thank you. And uh, thanks again, ladies and gentlemen. Please join us for drinks and dinner. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for your valuable time. Yeah. So uh, I know uh, it's maybe we could just stand together in the front for a group photograph before we go. And, like, and thank you, uh, Swamik, for being a great host. I think the questions were pretty uh, interactive. And thanks once again from Palo Alto Networks for being here. I hope I haven't done sales today. So, let's. <laughs> Thank you.